Hey everybody, welcome back. Here's chapter four. Uh, Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's library. Let's get started. So exactly what kind of games are we talking about? I don't know, said Akimi. Fun book stuff, I guess. And do you think this new library will have equally new computers? Definitely. Wi-Fi? Probably. Kyle nodded slowly. And this all takes place Friday night? Yep. Akimi, I think you just discovered a new way for me to shorten my most recent graduation. Groundation. Sorry. Your what? My game-deprived parental punishment. Kyle figured being locked in a library with computers on Friday night would be better than being stuck at home without any gaming gear at all. Can I borrow a pen and a sheet of paper? What? You're writing your essay now? On the bus? Better late than never. They're due in homeroom, Kyle. First thing. Fine. I'll keep it brief. Akimi shook her head and handed Kyle a notebook and a pen. The bus bounced over a speed bump and into the school driveway. He would need to make his essay really, really short. He was hoping the 12 winners would be randomly pulled out of a hat or something, like the lottery people always said in their TV commercials. You just had to be in it to win it. Meanwhile, in another part of town, Charles Chiltington was sitting in his father's library, working with the college student who he'd been hired who he'd hired to help him polish up his extra credit essay. He was dressed in his typical school uniform, khaki slacks, a blue blazer, a button-down shirt, and tastefully striped tie. He was the only student at Alexandriaville Middle School who dressed that way. What's a big word for library? Charles asked his tutor. Teachers love big words. Book repository. Bigger, please. Um, Antithenum. Perfect. It's such a weird word, they'll have to look it up. Charles made the change, saved the file, and sent the document off to the printer. Your dad sure reads a lot, said his ELA tutor, admiring the leather-bound books lining the walls of Mr. Chiltington's home library. Knowledge is power, Charles said. It's one of our fundamental family philosophies. Another was, we eat losers for breakfast. Kyle and Akimi climbed off the bus and headed into the school. You know, said Akimi, my dad told me the library people had a bazillion different architects doing drawings and blueprints that they couldn't share with each other. How come? To keep everything super secret. My dad and his firm did the front door and that was it. The second they stepped into Mrs. Cameron's classroom, classroom for homeroom period, Miguel Fernandez shouted, Hey Kyle, check it out, bro. He had he held up a clear plastic binder, maybe two inches thick. I totally aced my essay, man. The library dealio? Yeah. And I put in pictures and charts plus a whole section about the ancient library of Alexandria, Egypt, since this is Alexandria Ville. Ohio. Cool, said Kyle. Miguel Fernandez was super enthusiastic about everything. He was also the president of the school's Library Aid Society. Hey Kyle, do you know what they say about libraries? Uh, not really. They have something for every chapter of your life. While Kyle groaned, the second bell rang. All right, everybody, said Miss Danik Rome, Kyle's homeroom teacher. Time to turn in your extra credit essays. They started, she started walking up and down the rows of desks. The judges will be meeting in the faculty lounge this morning to make the preliminary cut. 
crap, thought Kyle. There were judges. This was not going to be some bingo ball drawing like the lottery. Mr. Keeley, the teacher, hovered over his desk. Did you write an essay? Yeah, sort of. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Either you wrote an essay or you didn't. Kyle half-heartedly handed his hastily scribbled sheet of paper, and unfortunately, Miss Cameron read it out loud. Balloons. There might be balloons. The classroom erupted with laughter. Until Miss Cameron did that tilt down her glasses and glare over them thing she did to terrify everybody into total silence. Is this your essay, Kyle? Yes, ma'am. We were supposed to write why we were excited about the grand opening, and, well, balloons are always my favorite part. I see, said Miss Cameron. You know, Kyle, your brother Curtis wrote excellent essays when he was in my class. Yes, Miss Cameron, mumbled Kyle. Miss Cameron sighed contentedly. Please give him my regards. Yes, ma'am. Miss Cameron moved on to the next desk. Miguel eagerly handed her his thick booklet. Very well done, Miguel. Thank you, Miss Cameron. Kyle heard an odd noise out in the parking lot, a puttering, clunking, clangering sound. Oh my, said Miss Cameron. I wonder if that's him. She hurried to the window and pulled up the blinds. All of the kids in the classroom followed her. And then they saw it. Out in the visitor parking lot, a car that looked like a giant red boot on wheels. It had a strip of notch black boot sole for its bumper. Thick shoelaces crisscrossed their way up from the windshield to the top of the 10 foot tall boot collar. It looks like the red boot from that game, said Miguel. Family frenzy. Kyle nodded. Family Frenzy was Mr. Lemoncello's first and probably most famous game. The red boot was one of the 10 tokens you could pick to move around the board. Sounds like Monopoly. A tall, gangly man stepped out of the boot cap. It's Mr. Lemoncello, gasped Kyle, his heart racing. What's he doing here? It was just announced, said Miss Cameron, this evening, Mr. Luigi Lemoncello himself will be the final judge. Of what? Your library essays. And that's the end of chapter four. Please stick around and we will get to chapter five. Thanks for listening or watching.